You are in the meeting now. Recording in progress. All right. Hey, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are y'all today? We good? Awesome. Um, looks like the other schools are having some trouble logging in. They will get here eventually. Um, I want to get right to... Uh, answering any questions that you may have over the homework. Um, I do have some quick announcements that I want to uh, state. Uh, number one, um, if you've looked ahead at um, the folders for assignment 17 and 18, you'll notice that there's not any videos there. Um, I am, uh, I just haven't made those videos. In fact, this is going to be the uh, first time in a couple of semesters uh, that we actually cover these sections. I just got behind in the past. My plan today is to get the videos for assignment 17 made. Um, I already have my notes done. Um, so when I get back to my office uh, this, and start this afternoon, um, I'm going to get those videos made for assignment 17. Um, should it take too long? I think it's only like four or five pages, five pages of notes. Um, so um, should it take too long to make those videos? If I have time, I'd love to get my assignment 18 videos made. Um, 
if I don't get those assignment 18 videos made today, um, they're probably not going to get made until either tonight or it'll be on Sunday. I got a busy or we'll be busy on uh, Saturday. Um, and maybe even until Monday that I get assignment 18 videos made, but those will get made um, by uh, the t before Tuesday of next week. Um, so just hold tight. Let me get those made. I'll sit down an announcement when I get those finished. Um, so with that being said, um, I want to address any questions that you have over um, assignment uh, 16, um, graphs of rational functions. Any questions over assignment 16, graphs of rational functions? Anybody? Plains, as I understand it, y'all are working on y'all's quiz, correct? Okay. Um, Can we do number three? Number three. Who is that? What's it's cool? close. Our camera's not working. Your camera is not working. So is that the green screen that I'm looking at? Yes, sir. Can y'all see me? Yes, sir. All right. And you said number three. Correct? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Um, all right, number three. All right. All right, f of x is equal to an x squared minus 1 over an x squared plus x minus 6. Now, before you can really answer most of those questions, um, especially when you get into f and g and h, um, you need to go through and do the B, C, D, and E. Um, so basically, I, I, instead of going through and doing A, B, C, D, and E, I'm going to just start off by graphing this function. All right, so to start off, I'm going to start off by factoring uh, the numerator and the denominator. So the numerator, we have the difference of two squares. x plus 1 times x minus 1, and in our denominator, we can factor this trinomial. What are the factors of negative 6 that add up to a positive 1? How about an x plus 3 and an x minus 2? And just for notation purposes and for things lined up within our notes, uh, the top is going to be p of x, the bottom it we're going to call q of x. Now, um, this may not be the same order that uh, steps that I go through in the notes, but here we go. Uh, first of all, the x-intercepts are found by solving p of x, our numerator, equal to 0. So if we set x plus 1 times x minus 1 equal to 0, 
we can say that x plus 1 is equal to 0 or x minus 1 is equal to 0, which then means that x is equal to negative 1 and x is equal to positive 1. There are our x-intercepts where the graph is going to cross the x-axis. And while we're talking about intercepts, we might as well find that y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, we need to evaluate f at 0. So uh, going back up here to our – in fact, I think it will be even easier if we go up here to the uh, expanded form. Uh, in the expanded form, if I start plugging in 0, 0 squared is 0, so we have negative 1 over – 0 squared is 0 plus 0 is 0, negative 1 over negative 6. That's a positive 1 6, so our y-intercept is at 0 comma 1 6. Still with me? Still hanging on? Yes. All right. The next thing that we want to find are the asymptotes. So let's start with the vertical asymptotes. I call that VA because I'm lazy and I don't want to write out vertical asymptotes. And to do that, we need to solve Q of X equal to zero. Now, if you recall, we factored our denominator to be X plus three times an X minus two. So we have X plus three times an X minus two equal to zero. Um, I'll skip a step. You set each factor equal to zero, and you get that x is equal to negative three and x is equal to positive two. So there are our vertical asymptotes. And then finally, we want to find the horizontal asymptotes. And to do that, what we need to do is we need to look um, – a better word than look would be to compare the degrees of P of X, which we'll call that degree N, and Q of X which we call degree M. And this again aligns with our notes. So if we look at the degrees of our numerator, the degree of our numerator is 2. The degree of our denominator is also 2. So we can say that N is equal to 2, M is equal to 2, which then we can say that N is equal to M. So going back and looking at your notes, there's a specific thing that we do when n is equal to m. We declare that y is equal to a over b, where a is the leading coefficient of our numerator and b is the leading coefficient of our denominator. So if we go back up here and look at this again, the leading coefficient of our top is a 1. There's a 1 in front of that x squared. The leading coefficient of our denominator is also 1. So that's 1 over 1, which is equal to 1. Y equal to 1 is our horizontal asymptote. All right. Now, with all this information, we can actually start sketching a graph of the function. So we'll come over here, draw myself a little coordinate plane. x-axis, y-axis. Let's start off by – I like to start off with my asymptotes. So my asymptotes, we have vertical asymptotes at negative 3 and 2. So 1, 2, 3. There's negative 3, so I'm just going to draw a dotted line like that. And then at 2, dotted line like this. 
and then we have a horizontal asymptote at y equal to 1. There's y equal to 1, so we'll graph a horizontal asymptote like so. So there are my asymptotes. Let's go ahead and now graph our intercepts. So we have intercepts at negative 1 and positive 1. So here's negative 1. Here's positive 1. And we have a y-intercept at 1, 6. All right, so we're just going to approximate 1, 6. So I'll just call it, put it right about there. Um, hold on. Sudan is emailing me. They're probably having internet issues. Um, sounds great. Okay, continuing. Um, Y-intercept right there about 1, 6. Now the question that we need to do, the thing that we need to do at this point, is we need to figure out what this graph is doing uh, basically beyond our asymptotes and in the middle. Now a couple of things to keep in mind. The graph will only cross the x-axis at these two points. The graph will only cross the x-axis at these two points. The graph will never ever cross these vertical boundaries. And as x gets really, really big out towards positive infinity, or as x gets really, really small out towards negative infinity, the graph will start to converge with our horizontal asymptote. Now, in the middle, we should be able to decide real quickly what the graph is doing. Notice that each of these zeros only occurs once. That means there's no multiplicities. That means that the graph is not going to bounce on the x-axis anywhere. Everywhere that you have a zero, the graph is going to cross the x-axis. So you can just look at the middle, and you can quickly determine that the graph is going to do something like this. Now, you can prove this, you can prove what I just showed by doing things like f at negative 2. Now, coming back up here, all I really care about is I want to prove that f at negative 2 is going to be negative. Well, just take a look at this. Negative 2 squared is positive 4 minus 1, all right, so that's going to be a 3. Now, negative 2 squared is 4, minus 2 is going to be 2, minus 6 is negative. You end up with a positive over a negative, which is negative. Now, we could find the exact value, but I just showed you that at negative 2, the function is negative. It's less than x equal to, or less than x equal to, or less than the x-axis. And we can prove that over here as well by doing something like f at 1.5. I'm not going to bother with that because we don't have a whole lot of time. So that's what the graph is doing in the middle. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Now you got to decide what the graph is doing to the left of this vertical asymptote and to the right of this vertical asymptote. Now, I could make some educated guesses. Question, can the graph do this? Yes or no? 
and tell me why or why not. Can the graph do that? I'll tell you that it can't. The graph cannot do this. You want to know why? Because if the graph did this, that means it would cross the x-axis right there. And that would mean that there's an x-intercept right here. Or it could be over here or wherever. But notice our only x-intercepts are at negative 1 and 1. The graph cannot do this. It cannot go down to converge with this um, vertical asymptote, and it cannot then go up to converge with this horizontal asymptote, because that's what it would have to do, but it can't do this because it's crossing the x-axis. So what does it have to do? It has to do something like this. Now this is just a sketch. This is not art class. I'm not asking you to give me the exact representation. The graph has to do this. Now, here's your proof. Proof. This is basically saying that for every single value of x that is less than negative 3, the graph is going to be positive, and more specifically, it's going to be greater than 1. Specifically, that means that it's positive. So I just want to prove to you that f at, let's say, negative 10 is positive. And I can do this without plugging things into my calculator. So f at negative 10. Come back up here to, you know what, you can even come back right here. Negative 10 plus 1 is a negative. Negative 10 minus 1 is also negative, and negative times a negative is positive. So you have positive up top, and then negative 10 plus 3 is negative. Negative 10 minus 2 is negative, and negative times a negative is also negative. So you end up with a negative over a negative, which is positive. That works with our graph right here. Now, for the same reasons... The graph has to do something like this. Now, I can prove to you that plugging in positive 10 is going to give you a positive answer, but you can also think about it like this. Can the graph converge this vertical asymptote by going down and then come up and converge with the horizontal asymptote? The answer is no, because if it went up like this and then converged with our horizontal asymptote, it would have to cross the x-axis, meaning that there would be another x-intercept, but the only x-intercepts that we have are at negative 1 and 1. All right, so does all of that, what I just talked about, make sense? Yes, sir. Now, we just answered questions uh, B through E. The next questions are things like, what's the domain? A, what is the domain? The domain is what x's are represented. So basically, I'm throwing out from my domain from negative infinity to th infinity, negative 3 and positive 2. So my domain is everything from negative infinity to negative 3, unioned with negative 3 to 2, unioned with everything from 2 to infinity. And then you can start asking doing the questions like f. As x is approaching negative 3, that minus sign means from the left, f of x is approaching blank. So approaching negative 3 from the left, so we're on the left side of negative 3, we're getting closer to it, my function starts going up, that y value that it's reaching is infinity. So when you look at your graph, your x and y axis, y is the exact same thing as f of x. Y is, y is the same thing as f of x. Um, skipping around, if you go to i, um, as x is approaching infinity, f of x 
is getting close to what? So as my x's get bigger, so my x's are getting bigger, my graph is getting infinitely close to this horizontal asymptote. What is the y value of this horizontal asymptote? It is 1. And I'll let you answer the rest of those questions. All right, what else can we look at? Any other questions that we can look at? Any other questions? No, sir. Okay. Well, if there are no more questions, um, um, I'm okay if everybody just goes goes ahead and starts the quiz. Um, let me make sure that I have. Yep, I have the week nine quiz uh, Dropbox available to you in Gradescope. So um, if y'all are ready, y'all can go ahead and start the quiz. Um, and um, if you have any more questions over the homework, um, go ahead and, and shoot me an email or something like that. I'll be glad to address those. Um, but if y'all want to go ahead and start the quiz, um, I'll just go ahead and mute my mic and let y'all begin that. Um, so, last opportunity, are there any other questions? Anything y'all want to look at? Alright, if not, go ahead and start the quiz. Y'all have a wonderful weekend, and I will see y'all on Monday um, for assignment 17. Y'all have a wonderful weekend. You too.
Your conference is scheduled to end in two minutes. Your conference is now over. Goodbye.